Hello. It's a pleasure to greet you again, even if it is virtually again this week. Um, as I found out that I've been exposed to the coronavirus all, along with Dad. Um, so we figured it would be uh, good to play it safe, at least until um, my COVID test comes back. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Luke, chapter 3, verse 8. John the Baptist told the crowds that came to be baptized, Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. And now from Genesis chapter 15, verses 1 through 6. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring. And so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, here we are in the 15th chapter of Genesis with God's promise to Abram. We've skipped over a few things in Genesis to get here, so I will recap briefly. Following the fall, we had the story of Cain and Abel, Noah and the flood, God's covenant with Noah, the Tower of Abel, and Abram's call. So now the word of God has come to Abram once again, and God promised to be Abram's shield and reward him greatly. But Abram's been following God for a while and has not seen much of what God has promised him, and he seems to be beginning to wonder. He's still childless, so no blessing of God will accrue to Abram's family, but would instead pass to Eliezer of Damascus, and Abraham bemoans this fact. So to put Abram's mind at ease, God takes him out and shows him the stars of the sky and promises to make his offspring as great in number. And Abram believed the Lord, and it was counted as righteousness to him. Paul writes of this kind of faith to the Hebrews in chapter 11. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. He goes on to speak of the faith of Abel, Enoch, Noah, and Abraham, who acted in faith and not by sight. That is often not an easy thing to do, especially when we try to trust in a God that can seem a bit distant and perhaps mysterious sometimes. We're more comfortable trusting in things that we think we know and understand, like our own abilities or the abilities of people we know. We want to trust in science, and often that trust is well-placed. But as we know, scientific knowledge is changing all the time, so today's scientific truth may turn out to have been not quite right tomorrow. So we have to be smart about where we put our faith and how absolute that faith is. The only absolute unchangeable object of our faith that I know of is God. But it can be hard to let go and let God. We sometimes make God our co-pilot, trusting in God somewhat, but 
hedging our bets with our own ability to make things work out right. And I get it. As I said earlier, I recently found out that Dad and I have been exposed to COVID through one of the workers at his living facility. Immediately, I started worrying about the what-ifs. But worrying doesn't help or change anything, so I trust in God to see us through whatever happens, and maybe nothing will. That's one reason I'm virtual this week. First, I don't want to risk spreading it to any of you if I'm infected. And the service is set online here if I do get sick. Worry doesn't really help, but worry that leads to planning and action can, if we listen to God before acting recklessly. Sometimes I have to remind myself that no matter how dark things seem, that God is in charge and can ultimately redeem human sin and stupidity, even Sometimes I have to remind myself that no matter how dark things seem, that God is in charge and can ultimately redeem human sin and stupidity if we let God be the pilot and seek to follow God's path rather than our own. Sometimes we may worry that we don't have enough faith for a given situation. But again, in that case, we are limiting God at best to being co-pilot. Reverend Vince, Gerha Reverend Vince Gerhardi reminds us that the size of our faith doesn't matter because God is the one doing the moving. Because if it's my faith that moved the mountain, then the bigger the mountain, the more faith I would need to move it. The bigger the obstacle, the more strength I'd need to climb it. The more serious the illness, an even greater faith would be required to overcome it. The more serious the sin, the more faith I would need in order to have it forgiven. That kind of logic makes a kind of sense, but that's not how faith works. In fact, faith doesn't work that way at all. And thank God for that. God is the one doing the work through faith. Think of faith as the, the key that opens the door to God acting in our lives. If I have a bigger key ring than you do, does it matter? The size of the key ring doesn't matter. Key rings don't open doors, but it's that little key on the ring that opens the doors. Even a little faith opens the door for God to move the mountains and trees and even our hearts, which may be the most difficult thing of all to move. There are a lot of things going on around us today that can try our faith. Hurricanes, wildfires, oppressive regimes, self-serving authority figures, the injury or death of innocence, the ongoing pandemic, and perhaps the most maddening of all, the play of Bears quarterback Mitch Trubisky. Okay, I kid, but only a little. But the God who can work good for the world from the murder of Jesus can work in our hearts to wake us up to changes that we can make in our lives. And in the world around us to make things better. If we look at any situation and prayerfully ask, what would Jesus do? We are probably going to be moving in the right direction. Sometimes we just have to look around and see what others are doing to make our world a better place and get on board with that. We don't have to reinvent the wheel or do everything ourselves from scratch. Abram had every reason in the world to lose faith. He was an old man and his wife was an old woman, and they were childless. But he trusted in God's promise. That man shall not be your heir. Your very own son shall be your heir, and your offspring will be as numerous as the stars. 
believing that promise at that time in his life would have taken a lot of faith. But God is always faithful to God's promises. We can always trust in God's word and put whatever faith we have behind that trust and then move on knowing that it is not up to us to accomplish whatever it is. The psalmist reminds us, O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And as Paul assures us in Romans 8, we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. Throughout the Bible, we find stories of God's steadfast love and grace. Yet somehow, often when we most need them, these stories slip our mind and our faith wavers. But the God who gives us the promise is faithful. All we need to do is put whatever faith we have to work and get with God's program, allowing God to work in our lives. Abram did, and despite all the obstacles in his life, he became the patriarch of Israel. Now, he was far from a perfect person or example, but he was fairly faithful nonetheless. He believed the Lord, and it was counted to him as righteousness. May we also work with God in faith so that our small portion of the world can be blessed through us and our faithfulness to God. May it be so for you and for me. Amen. Now let us join together in the contemporary affirmation. Throughout nature, we see the imagination of the creating God. In Jesus the Christ, we learn how to be in relationship with the Holy. With the Holy Spirit, we are empowered to embody divine love and mercy. In community, we experience belonging and receive the encouragement to live as faithful disciples of Jesus and to struggle for justice and peace for all creatures. Together, we have an insistent voice proclaiming that there can be a kingdom of heaven. And now we come into our time of prayer together. Please let me know how we can pray for you by emailing prayer requests to pastor at winfieldumc.org. This week I heard from Olive that her aunt Carmen de la Cruz died in the Philippines. So let us keep Olive and the de la Cruz family in our prayers. Let us pray. Lord, we pray for all those who have lost loved ones during this time of separation. Comfort them in their loss and help their loved ones to live in blessed memory. We also pray for those affected by the wild, wildfires that we also pray for those affected by the wildfires that continue to spread and consume our west coast. There are so many people that are having their lives torn apart and even losing their lives to the worst wildfires in this country's history. I also pray for the firefighters that are working for days and weeks on end fighting these fires. Lord, be with them, strengthen and sustain them as they seek to help others. Let us pray that they receive rain like we did last week and also for the farmers in central Illinois and elsewhere that haven't seen rain on their crops in over a month. Lord, I continue to pray for those who keep peacefully marching and protesting the systematic racist and sexist oppression in the United States, and also that the rioters and looters will face justice. Injustice anywhere means injustice everywhere, and we are all much poorer for it, even though we often don't notice its effects on us. It is so prevalent that we do not notice it, constantly working around us. I also pray for those in the South recovering from yet another hurricane. Help them find a way through this recent onslaught by Mother Nature. And I pray that you will also help us in this pandemic. Help us to find our way through the illness and the uncertainty that accompanies it. 
and all those whose lives and livelihoods have been affected. Help us to be our best selves during these trying times. And now let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now we come into our time of the offering, and we are collecting for the Blue Band um, in September and October, which is Bridge Communities, who provides free transitional housing to 131 homeless DuPage County families each year. During the two years with them, each family spends, um, they are able to save money, learn budgeting skills, and obtain better employment so they can live self-sufficiently once they graduate. I ask those of you who are remaining at home to remain faithful in your giving to sustain the ministries and missions of Winfield Community United Methodist Church by either mailing a check to P.O. Box 359, Winfield, Illinois, 60190, or texting funds to 844-928-1220, where you will be taken to a website to enter the amount and check Winfield. Now let us dedicate our gifts. Lord, even in these times of trial, we turn to you in faith, bringing our offerings and thanksgiving for your steadfast promises. May your light shine through us to help bless our corner of the world. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Now let us join together in hymn 374, Standing on the Promises.
go forth into the world this week, may we stand upon the promises of God, knowing that he who has promised is faithful. And let us be kind to all those we meet, for they may be fighting a battle that we know nothing about. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you peace. Amen.